and welcome. Today's video will be a bit different. Because the company N-Sabers, who makes very elaborate NeoPixel lightsabers, reached out to me, and even if it wasn't a blaster, it seemed like such a cool product, and as a Star Wars fan personally, this had me very intrigued. Also, I would say it's somewhat relevant, as we do have Nerf and Star Wars crossovers, including this lightsaber which could fire a dart. Now while this one's not going to fire a dart, it is still going to have some very cool features, so let's jump right in. Now included in the box is the hilt. Now this hilt is Mandalorian inspired, but it is not a cannon lightsaber. So this is an N-Sabers exclusive design, and we may or may not go over this more later, but this hilt is completely metal and it feels very high quality. We get the NeoPixel blade, and I'll show you how to install this in a minute. We get an Allen wrench and some screws, a display stand, which is pretty awesome, a full metal N-Sabers logo, a a pair of gloves just in case you don't want to get smudges on the hilt, the emitter which actually does not really do anything other than look really cool aesthetically because basically when you don't have the NeoPixel blade in here, say you had it on the stand, you could stick this in there and have a more accurate look. We get the charging cord but you do need to supply your own wall charger and we do get the instructions. So first off to charge this thing we are going to unscrew the hilt. This back end will just kind of come off. And if we flip this around, we can see our 3200 milliamp hour battery and our USB-C charging port. So once this is hooked in, you of course are going to connect this to a wall brick, plug it in, and you will see a blue LED. Once it is fully charged, the blue LED will turn off. And once you get this all charged up, the back end will just thread on just like it was, very simply. Now let's install the NeoPixel blade. By the way, installation for this blade and the little false emitter are exactly the same. So basically there are three screws that are going to secure this in place, and what I like to do is thread them all in a little bit. That way it's a lot easier once you have this in there. So all we're gonna do is press down so it's making contact, firm contact, and then we're gonna take our Allen wrench and secure each of the screws. I think you should tighten them so they're basically flush. If you've done it properly, the blade should not move. But if you are swinging it around like crazy, don't be surprised if you need to go back and tighten these up a little bit. So now that we've got it all charged up and the blade is secure, let's go over features and operation. Now every feature is actually controlled by this single button. And I'm gonna show you how a lot of that works. To turn it on, we're going to hold down the button as you probably heard, it just said power on, so now it is in idle. So first, before I turn on the blade, I'm going to go over the volume settings. To access the volume settings, you're going to hold this button down until it blinks once. Low volume. So that is low volume. Mute off. That is mute. On this setting, as you probably expect, the blade still glows, but it does not make any noise. High volume. And then the last setting is high volume. So we have three volume settings, low volume, high volume, and mute. And again, to access those, you're just going to hold down the button until it blinks once. Low volume, mute off, high volume. Now I'm gonna show you the ways that you can turn on this blade. And to do that, I'm going to turn off the light. First off, you can simply hit the button. And that works pretty well. You can also turn it off using the button if you hold it down for about five seconds. I did put the lights back on so I can show you this next really cool method. Another method to turn it on and off is simply to twist. This is one of my favorite ways to do it. It works very reliably and it's super easy and quick to do. You can also twirl the blade to put it on. You could also turn it on by quickly moving it towards the blade. And very similarly, you could also pull it downwards to turn it off. So there are plenty of options to retract it and ignite it. And I know this GoPro is going to warp this blade a bit, but I hope it's picking up just how bright this blade is. And this thing has what is called smooth swing. So just like canonical lightsabers, it responds to the way you move. Let me turn off the light to give you a better idea of this. As you can see, this motion detection is very refined.
So beyond what we've talked about so far, there is a lot more that you can do with this blade. It includes many blade fonts associated with characters from Star Wars. Each one of those fonts is going to give you the sound of the blade. But on top of that, on every sound font, you can change the color, you can change the actual ignition, and you can change the entire nature of the blade. So before we dive into those features, let's go over some of the character fonts. To access all the different character fonts, you're going to hold down this button until it blinks four times. One, two, three, four. So this one is going to be Kylo Ren. So we have that crackle, of course we have the red blade, and a different sound. Let's hold it down again. One, two, three, four. I am the Inquisitor. So this is the Grand Inquisitor. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four. Master Windu. Master Windu. One, two, three, four. I am told it is the Dark Saber. So that's obviously going to be the Dark Saber. One, two, three, four. This is going to be Obi Wan's. One, two, three, four. Quinlan Voss. Quinlan Voss. Oh, and to bring up some other features, when you have a blade on, you can tap the button once for blaster effects. And this works with every font. You can also hold down the button until it blinks once, and that is Blade Clash. And you can tap it again to release it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Temple Guard. So this is obviously the Temple Guard. Let me turn the volume down a bit. Low volume. Low volume. So as you may or may not know, the Temple Guard should have a yellow blade. So to change the color of the blade, we're going to hold down the button until it blinks twice. The blade has to be on for this to be done. One, two. And as you can see, it's cycling through all the colors. When you see one that you like, you can tap the button. So we're cycling through. I'm waiting for yellow. And there it is. You can basically choose any color for any font. And I guess this might be a good time to talk about how to change the ignition. So obviously this ignition is very standard. It's very canonically accurate, so it just kind of comes up when you hit the button. Pretty simple and pretty cool. To access the ignitions, we're going to hold down the button until it blinks twice, but with the blade off. One, two. So that's ignition two. So a little bit different. One, two. Ignition three.
That one's kind of strobey, but a little bit different. One, two. Ignition four. That one's pretty cool. One, two. Ignition five. That one kind of connects in the middle. Pretty neat. One, two. Ignition six. Ignition six. One, two. Ignition seven. Ignition seven. This one I really like. It makes a little clicking sound and some more color down here before it ignites. One, two. Ignition eight. One, two. Ignition nine. Pretty cool. One, two. Ignition ten. I have no idea what that one is. One, two. Ignition 11. This one's kind of like Godzilla. It does the build up just like his atomic breath. One, two. And we're back to one. But as an example, let's set it to two. One, two. Ignition two. Okay, so to access the different styles of blade, we are going to hold down the button until it blinks three times. One, two, three. Basic three. Basic three, so. So this setting is changing the exact nature of the blade. So this one is kind of pulsing. Let's set it to another. One, two, three. Basic four. Basic four. So this one is actually a rainbow effect, which is not canonically accurate, but looks really interesting. One, two, three. Basic five. This one is very stroby. I don't really like it very much, but it's an option. One, two, three. Basic six. This one is giving little bits of white throughout it. Looks pretty interesting. One, two, three. Basic seven. Basic seven. This one is a bit more erratic, but we're also seeing some white. One, two, three. Basic eight. Basic eight. This one is very wild. Definitely unique, and for this one and the rainbow one, it does not matter what color you set it to, this is going to take over. But even on a setting like this, you can still do blade clash, and the blaster effects. One, two, three. Basic nine. Basic nine. And this is giving a lot of white throughout but it's less stroby and more calm. One, two, three. Basic one. Basic one. Which is also very erratic and stroby. One, two, three. Basic two. Basic two. And basic two is just our very solid standard blade. But as I hopefully conveyed, you can change the nature of the blade, the ignition, and the color of the blade all independently. Now that we've gone over more of the technical features, let's continue on our journey of sound fonts. So again, that is going to be four blinks. One, two, three, four. Star killer. Star killer. So the sound on this is going to be associated with Starkiller, but I had previously changed the basic blade to Rainbow. So the changes that you make to each sound font will stay as you cycle through and you can adjust them however you want. But it does remember your settings. 
One, two, three, four. Ventress. Ventress. One, two, three, four. Leia. Leia. I really like the sound of this one. One, two, three, four. This is one of their own custom fonts. And I guess I did set it to the rainbow blade. One, two, three, four. This is Vader. One, two, three, four. Ahsoka. Very white. One, two, three, four. Anakin. But this one has been heavily modified. So obviously it had that different ignition and the white dots all throughout. One, two, three, four. So Kanan's master. One, two, three, four. Kenobi. Maul. Kenobi. One, two, three, four. Count Dooku. Count Dooku? One, two, three, four. This is another one of their custom ones. One, two, three, four. Palpatine. One, two, three, four. I'm not sure what this one is. Another rainbow one. One, two, three, four. Yoda. 
So obviously that one has been modified a bit, but it is Yoda. One, two, three, four. Ray Skywalker. Ray Skywalker. One, two, three, four. And it looks like we're back to Kylo Ren, so I think I basically showed off all of them. But yeah, the blade looks awesome, and this thing is very responsive and feature-packed. So what are my final thoughts on the N-Sabers Mandalorian styled lightsaber? Overall, this is definitely the highest quality lightsaber I have ever had my hands on. It is absolutely feature packed. Like I said earlier, the hilt is fully made of metal and the NeoPixel blade feels very strong, but I wouldn't personally feel comfortable dueling with it. Because this is a $200 lightsaber, I wouldn't personally advise anyone, you know, go crazy and start swinging these very expensive things at each other. But I have seen people do it and if you're comfortable with it, you know, try it out. But I'm personally very happy with it and wouldn't want to damage it. Also on that note, when you go to their website, if you are interested in purchasing this, they come in black and silver. This is the black one, and the silver one is just the same thing with inverted colors. But more importantly, there is the base lit option, which is $100, and the NeoPixel option, which is this one, at $200. The big difference is the base lit one is going to be better for dueling because up here, there is nothing, basically. On the base lit model, the light is emitted from the hilt. So it shines up here and still looks pretty cool, but it's not going to be completely even in its color displacement because obviously it's going to be more concentrated where the light is closer. So by the time you get to the tip, it's not going to be as bright, at least not evenly. From what I understand, the base lit model has all the different sound fonts and the smooth swing and a lot of really cool features, but it doesn't have things like the rainbow blade, some of the cool ignitions, and things like clash and blaster effects. That is exclusive to the $200 NeoPixel model. Though, if you're looking for a dueling saber, I would be much more comfortable dueling with the base lit model as there's really nothing happening in the blade. So hopefully that clears up any possible confusion. And if you do want to get your hands on an N Sabers lightsaber, I will have the link in my description. And if you use my promo code, which is FoamQuest, you'll get 7% off. Overall, if you're a Star Wars fan and are looking for a very accurate, besides the hilt, lightsaber, I think this is a phenomenal option, if you're willing to spend the money on it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. And while this thing is pretty darn awesome, stay tuned for more of my blaster content. Have a good one and happy blasting.